Hello everyone in Medical Scribe. I'm Karar Haider, student at Baghdad Medical College. In the previous video, we completed the deep fascia with its most important details, in which we began with its general information, then we moved toward the deep fascia classifications and the deep fascia subtypes, ending by the deep fascia functions. Why today, we will talk about the Burza. We can define the Burza as a closed, small, thin, fibrous, and fluid-filled sac. This sac will be made up of an outer membrane, which is a serous membrane, and an inner fluid. Alright. This burse will be found around most major joints of the body. And we can find them between the bones, the tendons, the muscles. And we can find them also on the bony prominences at the point of the friction or the stress. Well, we have about 160 burse all over the body in different regions. And these burse will be vary in the size and the shape. This variation depends on the person himself and also on the location of the burza. And we have some burzae that present at birth and others that will develop later in life due to certain causes. Good. Now let's go back to our burza structure. As we say, the burza composed of an outer membrane and an inner fluid. So, the internal surface of the outer membrane will be lined with a synovial membrane, or we call it synovium. This membrane is a very thin membrane of connective tissue, in which its thickness is just a few cells. And keep in your mind that this membrane is a semi-permeable, which means it will permit to certain materials to flow in and out. For example, it will permit the blood cells and the bacteria to enter the bursal sac. And this synovial membrane will secrete a fluid, which is a viscous, slippery, and lubricating fluid that will be similar in consistency and appearance and texture to the white part of the raw egg. This fluid will fill the bursal sac and will lubricate the internal surface of the sac. All right. Now we have to know that there is a two major classification to classify the burse. The first classification will classify the burse according to its depth into superficial burse and deep burse. So the superficial burse will be located just below the skin, such as the patellar burse in the knee and the olecranon burse in the elbow. So this is the superficial burza, while the deep burza will be located between the bones and the muscles. This is regarding the first classification, while the second classification will classify the burza according to if it is present at birth or if it is acquired. So the burza will be classified to either synovial burza or to adventitious or accidental burza. So regarding the synovial burzae, these burzae are the main and the most common type of burzae in the human body, in which it presents at birth. And these synovial burzae are also subdivided into five subtypes, according to its position, which are the subcutaneous burzae, which exist between the subcutaneous tissue and the deep fascia junctions, such as the elbow and the knee burzae. The second subtype is the subtendinous burzae, which exists between the tendons to facilitate the movement of tendons over the bone. While the third subtype is the submuscular burzae. This subtype will exist between the muscles or between the muscles and the bony prominences, such as the subacromial burzae and the brebatellar burzae. Well, the fourth subtype is the subfacial burzae which lie beneath the deep fascia. And finally, 
we have the fifth subtype, which is the synovial tendon sheath, which is a specialized type of burzae that wrap around the tendons. So these were all subtypes of the synovial burzae, which is the first type. The second type of burzae is the adventitious burzae, or the accidental burzae. This type is less common type, and it will be developed in response to repeated forces or in response to friction. And this type of burzae will be non-native. That means it won't be present with the person at birth, and instead it will be acquired during life. An example of this type is the adventitious burzae that develop in relation to the hallux valgus on the inner big toe base. And it occur due to regularly wearing a constricting shoes or due to have an abnormal foot anatomy. So this is the second type of burzae in the human body. Lastly, in our video, we have to know the functions of the burzae. The burzae have two main functions. The first one is that because they occur usually in locations that are subject to friction, so these sacs will enable the different structures such as tendons, ligaments, and muscles to move more freely over the other structures and reduce the friction that's supposed to occur between them if these sacs weren't exist. While the second function of the burzai is that this burzai may provide a role in the shock absorption. So these were almost everything about the burzai and its type and its functions. And that's it. I hope what I said makes sense. See you next video, and goodbye.